In today's video, we're diving into an ANCOVA, a statistical tool that combines ANOVA and regression. So what is an ANCOVA? When do you use it? And how is it calculated? First of all, ANCOVA stands for Analysis of Covariance. But let's start with an example. Imagine you want to know whether three different teaching methods, traditional, online and the mix, lead to different final exam scores. So you want to analyze whether the teaching method has an influence on the final exam scores. To find this out, you take a sample of 18 students and divide them randomly among the three teaching methods. At the end of the course, every student takes the same final exam and you record this course. Now we can calculate the mean in each group and we can test whether these means differ significantly which would indicate that there is a difference between the three teaching methods. But wait, this is a normal ANOVA. That is correct. An ANOVA tests whether there are statistically significant differences between three or more groups. More precisely, it is tested whether there is a significant difference between the means of the groups. Okay, so far so good, but what about the ANCOVA? We've already compared the three teaching methods using an ANOVA, but let's say we have an additional information. We also know how the students performed in a pretest. Every student took a short pretest to measure their starting knowledge. And we know that there is a correlation between the pretest score and the final exam score. But why is this additional information helpful? In an ideal scenario, all three groups begin with the same level of knowledge. But if group A happened to have stronger students at the start, teaching method A might appear better than it really is. So in the end, it would be difficult to know whether a teaching method success is due to the method itself or simply because that group had stronger students. So it would be great if we could level the playing field by adjusting each group's final scores based on their pretest scores. That way our comparison of teaching methods is fairer. And that's where ANCOVA comes in. Sometimes we want to see if different groups like teaching methods give different results. But people start at different levels. Therefore an ANCOVA lets us adjust for that starting point so the comparison is fair. In case of an ANCOVA, we have an independent variable, for example, the teaching method, we have the dependent variable, for example, the final score, and we have the so-called covariate, for example, the pretest scores, which are used to control for prior knowledge. Let's just look at some example data. Here we have the teaching method, the pretest score, and the final exam score. In total, we have 18 data points. To gain a clearer understanding of ANCOVA, let's run one online using DataTab. Afterwards, we'll discuss the theory of ANCOVA and how it works, and I promise I will keep everything simple. So to calculate an ANCOVA online, we just copy our data into this table. If you like, you can load this data with the link in the video description. Now we click on ANCOVA, and simply select final score as dependent variable and method and pretest score as factors and covariates. Here are the results and there below is the ANCOVA table we are most interested in. If you like, you can just click on interpretation and get an interpretation of this table. To keep things simple for now, let's focus on the p-values. Later we will discuss the rest of this table. Here we see the p-values for teaching method. Because the p-value is below 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis and conclude there is statistically significant evidence that the teaching method influences the final score. The same for the pretest score. Because the p-value is below 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis and we conclude there is statistically significant evidence that the pretest score influences the final score. Of course, you can also have more than one independent variable and more than one covariate. Now we come to the most interesting part of this video. How does an ANCOVA actually work? 
As we know, an ANCOVA is an ANOVA plus a regression. The ANOVA compares the group averages and the regression finds the relationship between two numbers. To understand ANCOVA, you can think of it in two ways. You can view ANCOVA as ANOVA with an extra step or as a regression that includes group differences. Both are useful, but most people find their regression view easier, me included, so I will use the regression view to explain ANCOVA. So let's build a regression model. We will predict each student's final score using three parts, a constant, the pretest score, and the teaching method. Because no model is perfect, it will have some error. If you're interested in how to set up this regression model, I'll walk through that briefly at the end of this video. Okay, but how do we calculate an ANCOVA? We want to find out how the pretest score and the teaching method affect the final exam score. How can we tell if one of those really matters? We look at the model's error. Here's the trick. For example, if we remove the teaching method from our regression and the error gets much bigger, that tells us the teaching method is important for predicting the final score and it has therefore a big impact on the final score. So we are on the right track, but to keep it clear, let's rewrite this in a more compact form. Here is our regression model with the pretest score and the teaching method and that gives us a certain error epsilon. Now it is easy, we just build three simpler models, one drops the pretest term, one drops the teaching method term and one drops both. That simplest version is called the null model and the original is our full model. But what is the null model? The null model makes no use of any extra information. And if you don't have any extra information, what would be the best guess for the final exam score of a certain person? Because we have no extra information, we just take the final score of all students and calculate the mean of those scores. Now we simply use this mean as the prediction. So we have each student's actual final score and the final score predicted by the model, for example, using the overall mean. This of course gives us a large error. The error for each student is now simply the actual score minus the predicted score. This gives us a list of errors, one value for each student. To turn those into a single measure, we square each error, so negatives become positive and we sum them all up. This sum is called the sum of squares of the error. So the sum of squares of the errors for the null model is 666.9. Now of course we can also use a model which uses extra information, for example the teaching method, this model is more accurate and leads to a sum of squares of the errors of 496.5. So keeping a long story short, for each model we can calculate the sum of squares for the full model, for the pretest only model, for the teaching method only model and for the null model. Now it's easy to calculate the sum of squares shown in the ANCOVA table. To determine the effect of the teaching method, we simply take the difference between the model that uses only pretest scores and the model that also includes the teaching method. So we have 283.1 minus 70.3, which is 212.78. We can do the same for the pretest score. In this case, we use the full model and the model which excludes the pretest. The error is just the sum of squared errors of the full model. Now let's look at the degrees of freedom, which tell us how much independent information we have. The teaching method degrees of freedom is the number of groups minus 1, with three methods that gives us 3 minus 1 is equal to 2. The degree of the covariate is just 1. And the degrees of the error are 18 minus 4, which is 14. 18 is the total number of data points and 4 are the degrees of freedom of the method plus the pretest plus 1 for the constant. The mean square is now just the sum of squares 
divided by the degrees of freedom. So we can write it in this form for any term. The f value is obtained by dividing the mean square of the specific term by the error mean square. So we can write it in this form. f is the mean square of the specific term divided by the error mean square. Finally, we can calculate the p-value. The p-value can be calculated with the f-distribution. You can find an f-distribution calculator on Datatab. Just enter your f-value, 21.18, the treatment degrees of freedom, 2, and the error degrees of freedom, 14, and you will get the p-value. Now there are two open topics, the assumptions, and what the regression model actually looks like when we don't use icons. The assumptions are straightforward because we are simply running a regression and ANCOVA has the same assumptions as a regression. The most important one is that the errors are normally distributed. We can test this with a QQ plot or with analytical tests. If you'd like, just check out my video Test for Normal Distribution for a deeper dive. Okay, and now the question, how to actually create a regression model which doesn't consist of icons. I won't go into detail here, it's just meant to give you a feel for what's happening in the background. First of all, teaching method is a categorical variable. In order to use it in a regression, we first need to create dummy variables. For the categorical variable teaching method with three categories, we create three new dummy variables that take values of 0 or 1. For example, the first dummy variable is 1 when teaching method A is used and 0 otherwise. We always create k-1 dummy variables for k categories. Therefore, we can ignore one of the three dummy variables. Let's just use the first. If you like, we have a whole video about dummy variables. Now that we know that, let's take a big step and look at the final equation. Here is the dependent variable final exam scores. This is the so-called design matrix. It includes the constant term, which is always 1, followed by the two dummy variables for the teaching method and finally the pretest score. We now want to determine the array with A and B1 through B3 such that the sum of squared errors is minimized. This is our full model. If we want a reduced model with, for example, only the pretest score, we simply exclude these two variables. And now, as discussed in the video, we can compare the sums of squared errors from both models to determine how strong the teaching method's effect is. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video.